Hi friends, welcome back. So question for you, when it comes to money and finances, are you honest with other people and are you honest with yourself? That's the subject of today's video. And uh, this subject actually comes up because I saw this fascinating article in the Business Insider today and I uh, wanna go over it with you. It's about dealing with your neighbors and money. So let's just jump right in and uh, we'll go over it here. It says, um, my neighbors expect me to pay for half of the garden between our homes. How do I get them to stop asking? And um, we'll go through the letter, but the basic gist of it is, you know, you have your neighbors and uh, they're intruding on your land. <laughs> I'm intruding is the right word, uh, but they're using part of your land to do a garden and um, they essentially want you to uh, cover half the cost. Um, and uh, what do you do about it? So let's listen to the scenario and I uh, want to get your thoughts because some, some of you may have uh, faced this kind of difficulty in your life. And um, I want you to think about this as well. This is not just with neighbors. It could be friends. It could be family. It could be any number of things where someone essentially expects you to share expenses, but you don't necessarily want to. Uh, so this is here, um, dear for love and money. Uh, when we first moved into our house, the neighbors introduced themselves, right? So it seemed nice. Uh, showed us around the yard between our houses. Um, that's half theirs and half ours. And told us how the previous owners of our house had shared a flower garden with them uh, there, uh, splitting the cost and labor, right? So, you know, the, the, you came in, you replaced the uh, previous owners and the, you know, their neighbors have like a deal with the previous owners and they expect you to sort of do the same. Um, we were nice about it, but made it clear that we weren't big gardeners and we wouldn't be up for this uh, arrangement ourselves, right? So they're saying, okay, we don't really want to do it. We're not up for this arrangement. Again, that's sharing the cost of the garden. Um, they never mentioned it again outside of calling us over so they could update us on the garden's progress as the season went on. Now that didn't seem too unusual because your, your neighbors and you know, again, sharing your land and say, hey, this is what the garden's doing, etc. cetera. Um, then this winter we got an invoice, uh-oh, talking about money now. We got an invoice from them in our mailbox, right? Uh, outlining uh, our half of the cost. Uh, so I went over there, uh, went over and thanked them for all their hard work, but uh, let them know we didn't have the money or the interest, right? Money or the interest to keep garden in our half of the yard. So why we wouldn't charge them uh, for using our space uh, if they wanted to, we wouldn't pay, uh, be paying for it either. The conversation was awkward, but everything seemed fine. And um, again, I want you to just reiterate, this is not just from, uh, uh, with neighbors. It could be friends, it could be family, any number of things where someone sort of like, you know, talks to you about something and then just sort of ignores what you say in a way, um, you know, and then is asking you for money uh, regarding said thing. And I'd um, like to hear your guys' experience if you have anything similar to this. I, I'm sure you guys have had these kind of scenarios. Um, this also says here, um, but this spring, they have already been texting us pictures of the flowers they're buying using our trash cans, right? So now they're, uh, keep telling you about, you know, how awesome the garden is, right? And they're buying yet more stuff. And remember they sent you a bill before. Uh, using our trash cans for yard waste, right now they're using your stuff and even letting us know that they used our hose, even your hose, uh, to make the water bill fair. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> uh, my husband is on the verge of going off on them, uh, but I don't want bad blood with our neighbors, right? Um, I feel like we've done everything though at this point, they're being intentionally ignorant. Um, what should I do, right? So this person says, I feel like we've done everything though at this point, they're being intentionally ignorant. Uh, sincerely, not a gardener. Um, and it's funny because uh, the first thing I thought about um, when I actually read this scenario, and this uh, shows my age here, I'm 49 if you guys don't know, and um, I grew up with this movie called Back to the Future. And um, I, I actually pulled up an old scene here. I, I, I think this is from the first one. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. I, I, need to see it again probably because it's a good movie um but uh, if you don't know the story back to the future is basically um uh, biff and then the other guy that was named was it marty mcfly i think or i can't remember this mcfly I just remember hello mcfly <laughs> those of you old enough you know but basically um biff who's this character here is kind of a bully to the mcfly character and um this is when they're adults and um you saw the same thing when they were when they were in high school and the the, the basic gist of it and, and this is just unfortunate truth um, some people are pushovers, uh, be it when they're young and also too when, when they're older. Uh, there may be some people watching this channel that are pushovers as, as well. And, and I, I, how can I say, I, I try to say this in a polite way as, as possible, um, not, not, not to denigrate, because guys, I, I completely understand uh, in these situations for, for many people, you just don't want to rock the boat. Um, I, I give you an example. So uh, this is something that is, is hard to teach people and many of us just want to avoid it, to be really frank. Uh, you go to the car dealership and anyone who's been in the USA and, and ever tried to buy a car in the USA, you know how 
pushy the salespeople can be and how they gang up on you basically and just say, oh, you have to buy this car. It's got to be this price, et cetera. And you're like, um, you know, can I get a lower price? No, you can't. Absolutely cannot. And they like, they just make it, they, they make it seem like you, you can't negotiate, you have new options, et cetera. And then just sort of make you feel like a, a fool, you know? And remember the, the people who are out there to essentially take your money at the car dealership, these people are professionals, right? That's what they do every day. And, and they're used to sort of bullying people around who don't do this every day. Like I don't buy a car every day. I'm sure you don't buy a car every day, et cetera. I always talk about cars because it's a good way to uh, talk about this stuff. But when I was a kid, the people I were around, at least the adults, uh, were in the similar thing, a situation. Like they, they um, wouldn't negotiate. Um, they would um, sort of let their insecurities about lack of education get to them. And, and also too insecurities about sort of, how can I say, like the, the, the psychology was, the, the the person you know asks you you have to buy the car for we'll say twenty thousand or whatever and then if if you want a lower price it sort of makes you feel like that you can't afford the twenty thousand right opposed to thinking hey I want a lower price because I don't want to overpay for twenty thousand it, it's it's a different type of way of thinking of the psychology and I just give you one example but there's any number of reasons why uh, people refuse to say no uh, some people just don't want to ever rock the boat ever cause any kind of font conflict. And then that sort of creates a, a, a sort of environment where everyone walks all over you. And I know I'm talking about sensitive topics, guys. I, I really know because this is also the reality. And, and um, this is something I mentioned where I learned from you in the community. And, and hopefully you guys learn from me. And we just share things with each other where uh, I've been talking about Tesla stock the last couple of days. And someone I remember actually a couple of people wrote where the world is filled with, you know, some people who just want to follow and some people who want to lead. Right. And for those of you who, you know, just want to follow, just like, oh, well, you know, Mr. Musk, I just want to follow any, everything and anything that he says because I don't want to uh, rock the boat. Um, unfortunately, and this is just the, the, the truth of it, um, not every leader or not every salesperson has uh, your back, right? Meaning that they don't necessarily have your best interest. Here's a good example. I'm using the Amway example. Um, if you go to any one of these kind of Amway things, uh, they basically march all these people out on stage and they say, you know, if you want to be rich, you want to be awesome. Um, you know, just, just buy our, our courses for whatever a thousand dollars or $2,000, whatever they sell these dang things for. <laughs> and to go to these events, it's probably like 10 grand or something. And I'm not making it up. It's like really expensive and they hype you up, et cetera. And, and they, they make it seem like, well, I mean, it's the logical decision to buy our Amway products and go push Amway on all of your friends, right? They, they're, they're professionals at it, the same way the car dealerships are professionals at it. Um, I'm bringing all this stuff up guys, because, you know, going back to say the, um, the example of the gardener. Or the Marty McFly thing is because I, I whenever we talk about examples on, on this channel, I want you to extrapolate this just one example, but apply it to many different uh, facets of your life. And so, um, again, have you ever been in a situation to where someone's like, hey, you know, I want to uh, do something. Maybe maybe I'll give you a couple examples. Maybe it's, um, uh, you know, plan a uh, party for your friend getting married. And um, this is something that happens a lot. There'll be five friends that go in. And one friend wants to do the really expensive, you know, uh, trip to Hawaii or whatever uh, to celebrate. Another friend wants to go, you know, a little bit cheaper because they, they can't afford it. And then it's kind of embarrassing to tell your other friends, I, I, I can't afford to go to Hawaii this year or whatever. Um, and and mul multiple times in, in your life, and this could be also in a relationship, uh, you'll get pushed into situations that, frankly, you, you can't afford. And um, it's uncomfortable to tell people that, that you can't. And this the Biff example is, is uh, more extreme, I think. In, in the situation, Biff crashes the car and blames, uh, you know, McFly for not buying enough insurance for his car or something stupid like that. But but people will abuse you um, if you let them. And you know, some of the things that, that I you know talk about on say on this channel, I, I come, sometimes I may come across a little bit mean when we talk about money um, because I'll say, hey guys, I, I think this is overvalued. I'll say, hey guys, I think this thing's a total scam. Or I'll say, hey guys, you know. I think this person's not telling the truth. Uh, I, 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 it's because I, I don't get pushed over. <laughs> I don't let people push me around. Um, and uh, I, I found in, in this world, there are a lot of people out there that sort of have their best interests at heart, uh, which may not include yours. So um, this is a long conversation, of course, but I, I hope you guys understand the importance of it. Um, this is the answer that um, the Business Insider had, actually, uh, the kind of language that you could use with your neighbors. So let's read through what they have to say. They say here, uh, dear neighbors, we've noticed you are using our trash cans for yard waste and our hose for water. All right, this is again the response. Combined with your repeated text full of landscaping options, this has us worried that in the past when we told you we wouldn't participate in a shared garden, 
you didn't understand this. So they're, they're trying to be polite. Say, oh, maybe you didn't understand. We, you know, we, we meant to say no. Maybe you just didn't understand. Um, that now you're saying like make it clear. We want to be clear by using our water and trash cans. You are involving us financially against our wishes. Right? Make it as clear as possible. Um, also say here. Uh, we don't mind if you use our property for your garden, right? So you set where your limits are, um, but our involvement will need to end there. Um, but if, if that's too much work and money for you alone, you will need to keep a smaller garden on your side of the boundary line. I know sharing this garden with the previous owners was special to you, and I am sorry to disappoint, but our position is firm. Uh, you cannot use our utilities, tools, or trash cans we will not be splitting costs on plants or helping you in the garden. And uh, this is the uh, last paragraph here. Unfortunately, since you consistently ignored our clean nose in the past, we no longer feel comfortable allowing you to use our yard for your garden. Going forward, we will consider any gardening activity on our side of the property trespassing and will involve the authority. So um, the, I, I know when you read through these paragraphs, it's like, like different tones. But the, the reason why they, they had these different tones is sort of like depending on where you are and what the person understands or doesn't understand, right? So the first thing you want to say, hey, maybe there's a misunderstanding. We're not going to pay for it. <laughs> then you say, okay, we're not going to pay for it. Don't use our stuff, right? Um, maybe to go for, you know, just make a smaller garden. Don't involve us. We don't want to be involved. Or maybe just be like, hey, we're going to have to call the authorities, right? So um, it, it, is, it is a difficult thing um, when you deal with, with money and other people because... Um, you're not sure. You're not sure if someone doesn't understand or, or not. And again, guys, I want to make it clear. This is just not about neighbors. It's about how you relate to people uh, regarding money and finances is you have to make uh, what you say very, very clear. So there's no misunderstanding. Make sure that uh, they receive the message. And ultimately, you have to essentially uh, put your foot down. Um, I know sometimes it may seem mean, um, but uh, respecting yourself and standing up for yourself and, and your money and your finances is a very important part of being successful in this world. So i um, love to hear your thoughts on any one of these things that we talked about. I uh, do appreciate your time and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.